Of course, the air conditioner would now start. Just about to record this part. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to a special video. video. Plate, come here. <laughs> Welcome to a special video on Aethor Genesis New Horizons modded. Everyone, um, it has been a month since I last recorded Aethor Genesis New Horizons, and I had spent some time during my not recording looking at the files for Aedor Genesis, attempting to figure out how to tweak the AI to prevent it from hyper-leveling. And unfortunately, I cannot figure out how to do this in the VAR files for this amazing game. What that means is that whenever the AI decides to hyper-level itself, I will have to cheat to get past it unless we simply decide to sacrifice the shard and take a loss. Now, I do not like taking a loss because of what I consider to be a poor decision-making on the developer for the game. And that's pretty harsh for me to say, but the, well, there it is. Um, I do not like the AI hyper-leveling, and from everything I can tell, it's actually been... It's actually like the decision people made when it came to designing the AI. People have attempted to fix it, no one seems to be able to do so, and I myself cannot change it by editing any of the files. Over a month and a half ago, I uploaded a video asking you guys, should I spawn dragons in my army to let me just annihilate the AI when it does this? Should I simply stop playing the game, or should we attempt to cheat in such a way where I have balanced battles. I decided that I was going to cheat in a more balanced fashion, at least for the upcoming videos which will follow the one which I currently am uploading. In the future, though, I will probably spawn dragons and other things as well. Now, before we go any further, because there's a bit more I want to talk about with this video here, know that I will only do this when the AI has hyper-leveled itself and I have not been able to figure out a way to circumvent it. On several shards now, we have encountered a AI which has leveled itself significantly faster than me and I believe it has done this through the use of its hyper-leveling. But I still win. Because holy crap, I can make amazing decisions and I get rather lucky sometimes with how I do things and or the AI makes some bad decisions in the combats that I do. If I can circumvent the AI through such a means, I will do so and we will still attempt to win the shard. If the battles are close, despite the AI's super leveling, I am willing to still accept the results of this and take a loss on the shard. But for the next video, which is going to follow this one, there was nothing I could do. The AI leveled itself once every other level at least, and there was absolutely no hope for me to compete with that. And this was not because of, I think, poor decisions I made. This is simply because this is the way the game was designed. So that said, you should know that I have recorded up to part 121 at this point. And, well, it's been amazing. And I will still be playing this game. I'll just have to do a little bit of blatant cheating myself when the AI does so, and I cannot find a way to circumvent it doing so. Next! In this past month or so, since I have recorded this game, I have been spending a lot of time looking at those VAR files, and I would like to make some adjustments to the game. Three in particular. But I would like your guys' permission to do these changes. Now I know that I have quite a few people who like watching this video series, and quite a few of you don't like leaving any comments on my videos, and that's perfectly fine. I myself am not a commenter when it comes to other people's videos. I do it very rarely. So, there will be a survey which you can leave your thoughts on instead of commenting here. That survey has three or four questions on it about the things I would like to change. I will describe them here, and I'll put a link down below in the comments section you can go and click on that link and it will bring you to the survey and you guys can fill it out. I'll leave it up there for a week, I'll look at the results, and I will make the changes or not make the changes, depending. Let's talk about those changes now. Number one. 
I would like to alter the magicians and the adepts in this game. I, I feel that the reason magicians and adepts are unscrupulous and not neutral is because... It, okay, let, let, me, let me do this part again. Mage, uh, magicians and adepts are spellcasters. You can either find, in the case of adepts, by finding their scroll, or magicians by building the mage tower, a tier 3 unit structure. They are magical ranged units, and their description reads as if they're neutral, but they are considered to be unscrupulous. If I was to take them in my armies, they would greatly drop in their own karma level, and they would impact the levels of my army significantly. I do not feel like they should be considered unscrupulous. They're not evil. They just practice magic. And I think the reason why they are unscrupulous is because of the witch hunter armies. Because they hunt mages, they do extra damage with their smite evils to mages, and I think think that might affect them a little bit. I would like to change them. I would like to give them the same passive ability that the Ratmen have. Ratmen have a passive which allows them to not affect and also be not affected by different karma levels in your armies. I believe I have figured out a way in which to give this passive to the Magicians and the Adepts. And I would like your permission to do so. Number two. I would like to lower the cost of all of the shard invasion bonuses that I have. I feel that the vast majority of these bonuses are way too overcosted. I think that they should probably all be lowered by half of their current totals. Unfortunately, however, this is not something as easily done as the Magicians and Adepts. The price, the Astral Energy cost of these items is not, some, is not set specifically for the items. It is based on the in-shard cost of purchasing all of these units, the structures, the guards, etc., etc. What you pay in gold and gems is determining the astral energy cost. For every one gold, it is two astral energy. And then for gems, the way the cost is decided is that the first gem costs you six astral energy. And, uh, I'm sorry, the first gem costs you four astral energy, and the second costs you six. The altar, thus, is 100 Astro Energy for its 50 gold, and then 24 for its 5 gems. The only way in which I can lower the Astro Energy cost of these items is to actually lower the in-game shard cost of the building, item, unit, or guard contract. What this means is that if I have your guys' permission to lower it by half, I would lower the cost of these by half, basically, and then when I logged into the shard, I would then restore the item to its normal cost. In this way, we would not permanently reduce by half the cost of all of these items. I obviously would not reduce the costs of the maintenance for any units that I hired, but I would like your guys' permission to lower these costs. There will be a choice in this, in, in this case as to how much these would be lowered by. I personally feel that they should be lowered by half. However, I am willing to, to lower their cost by one-third and still consider uh, bringing them along. Of course, you guys can also say, No, Tim, I don't want you lowering the costs whatsoever. That is also fine with me. But then you should also anticipate me almost never purchasing any of these items, with the exception maybe of the Dwarfen Shield on occasion. At least not this early on in the game. Maybe around turn 30 or 40, I begin bringing some of the more expensive ones with us, depending upon our, our Astral Energy Reserve. Another change I would like to do is to adjust the Dark Elf Night, uh, sh night Shadows. 
the tier one girls with the crossbows. You have heard me complain about them endlessly, and I have figured out how to tweak them. There will be several choices for how I would like to change them, but I am leaning heavily towards lowering their range by one and lowering their range defense by one as well. But there will be several choices as to how we adjust them, and of course, there'll be an option to say, nope, don't change them at all, Tim, leave them alone. And I am fine with that. I'm absolutely fine with that. Finally, I would like to do something for the commander, for his... for the ability he starts with, the plus one morale, and... Uh, plus 5% experience bonus for his army. I think this is perhaps one of the weakest options in the entire game. And I would like to tweak that a bit. Oh, I said finally, but there is one more change also. I would like to, if it's possible, change the scout as well. I would like to change his looting ability. Currently, it's 20%, 10%, 20%, then I think it's 20% and then 30% for his upgrades for that. I would like to change it to 20, 20, uh, 20, 20, 30, 30, and then 40% bonus for his looting, as opposed to a much weakened, uh, a weaker one. I say much weaker, but it's only going to make him change by about uh, 20 or 30% total. Uh, I'll, I'll fiddle with the numbers, and they'll be up there on the survey. Anyway, I'm done, done, I'm done babbling. I hope you guys understood what I would like to change. And of course, the survey will be there as well. It will show you what the current values are, and it will ask if I can change it to new values. Alright everyone, thank you guys for watching this little video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care everyone.